Tonight's topic is called Don't Be a Liar. That's tonight's topic. Okay? Don't be a liar. All right? Don't be a liar. That's tonight's topic. Watch this. Give me the book of James, chapter 2, verse 8. James, chapter 2. You see, brothers and sisters, the book of James is a heavy book right here. Give me James, chapter 2, verse 8. Watch this. James, chapter 2, verse 8. Read. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, come on, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. You do how? Ye do well. Ye do well. Ye do well. Read that again, verse 8. Read verse 8 again for me. James chapter 2, verse 8. Mm -hmm. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. You see that thing? The royal law, according to the scripture, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. So in order for you to do well in the sight of the Most High God, you must love your neighbor as yourself. That's called charity. That's the spirit of charity right there. Watch this. Give me the book of Exodus, okay, chapter 20, verse 16. Exodus 20, verse 16. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, ye do well. Watch this. This is the milk, brothers and sisters. Exodus 20, verse 16. Read what you got. Exodus chapter 20, verse 16. Read. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Stop lying to your brother. Stop lying to your sister. Read it again. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. What is that called? You love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you don't bear false witness against your neighbor, you do well. That's what the scriptures is teaching us. That's what the Lord is opening our minds to understand. Because this right here is one of the biggest problems in Israel. Read it again. Exodus chapter 20 verse 8. Come on. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Watch this. Give me Romans 13 verse 9. Romans chapter 13 and verse 9. Romans chapter 13 verse 9. Come on. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. For this thou shalt not thou what? Shalt not, for this thou shalt not commit adultery. You see, you, you see that when you commit adultery, there's a lie involved in there, obviously. Because you are sneaking behind these curtains, you understand, to commit adultery. So guess what? That goes into lying as well. Okay, come on. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not kill. Go ahead. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. You see that thing? It says, thou shalt not commit adultery. Because a lie is the, is the motivating factor to commit adultery. Because you have to bear false witness to in order for you to commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. You see that thing? Guess what? You commit the murder and then they say you are guilty. You say, no, I plead not guilty. That's a lie. Okay? Thou shalt not steal. That's a big one right there. You understand? The thieves, they will steal something from somebody's house. Guess what? They're going to stand at the street corner and say, I'm selling. You understand? They're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna, they steal it, and then now in their mind, that's their, that, 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 that belongs to them. That's theirs, and they're gonna take the thing that they stole to do what? To make money out of it. Lying. So now, how did they get those goods? Through deceit. Watch this. Um, give me the book of Sirach. Okay, give me Ecclesiastes chapter twenty. Ecclesiastes chapter 20 and verse, verse 9. Sirach 20 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 20 verse 9. Come on. There is a sinner that hath good success in evil things. That's a thief. Because a thief has good success in evil things. They lie. You understand? Come on. And there is a gain that turneth to loss. Because they're just, the, the quicker he, he, he the, you see, as quick as he got that thing, the quicker he can lose it. You see, you see, there's a gain that turned to loss because he can lose his life. They can put a bullet through his head. That's what can happen. You understand? The owner can find you with the thing you've stolen 
and they can what? They can bring harm unto you. You can lose your life behind it because why? You lie. You understand? Go ahead. The sin. There is a gift that shall not profit you. You see that thing? They, that gift, hold on. They Or sometimes they steal and then they come and give you a gift that they've stolen. You see movies like that all the time. Okay, there's a gift that should not profit thee. Brothers, they go out, they steal, they come back home with the stuff they've stolen. And you know, the worst thing about it is, especially the mothers, the mothers know, they, are, they know that their boy, their son is a thief. But she don't mind because he, whenever he comes home, he be bringing stuff, food, things he stole, TVs, cell phones, computers, beds, cutlery, they steal whatever. You understand? She knows that this boy right here, he's the devil the Bible speaks of. But guess what? She will, she will defend him because she benefits from this thing. You know, there was a, I think there was a case, right? There was a case on TV. There's one brother, he was just going around, just stealing, okay, murdering and raping. And what happened was that when he was committed to, I think, well, how, I think he had like 13 life sentences, this brother. And he in South Africa. And what happened was that when it was for, what is time for him to go into the hall, you know, he, when he leave the, the court and all that, um, the courtroom, he has to talk to one of the family members and all that. And the mother is, the mother spoke to him. Okay. He, he, he actually went to his mother to give the last words before he went into uh, the thing. He, he went into the hole. You see that thing? And he, 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 as when you, it, it, it was as if he made it seem like he wants to whisper something to her ear and he chopped the ear off with his teeth. You understand? And he blamed everything on his mother. He says, you knew I was doing this, but you never corrected me. My point in this is this. Yeah, he had the devil on him, but his mother also had the devil on him. You understand? They concocted that lie. Okay, read that part again. Verse 10. Ecclesiastes 20 verse 10. Go ahead. There is a gift that shall not profit thee. Mm -hmm. And there is a gift whose recompense is double. You see that thing? There's a gift whose recompense is double. Meaning you're going to get double for making a blot, a lie to get what you want. That's also called covetousness. Watch this. Give me the book of Toby chapter 3. Okay. Tobit chapter 3, no, no, Tobit 2, Tobit chapter 2 and verse, verse 13. Tobit 2 verse 13, read that. Tobit chapter 2 verse 13. Mm -hmm. And when it was in my house and began to cry, I said unto her, from whence is this kid? Is it not stolen? Render it to the owners, for it is not lawful to eat anything that is stolen. He says, for it is not lawful to eat anything that is stolen. That's because you stole it. When you come back, you say, you know what? No, this is mine. Okay? You go out, you steal, you come back, you bring the goods home, and then it's like, no, vingtawalaza. It's if like, that's a good thing. No. Yes, there's one, there's vingtawalaza because you are hereza, lawfully. You understand? But there's another word, there's, there's another concept, you, we are, we are, we are hereza, but what that really means, it will us. Uh -huh. You stole the stuff. And then you go to the seed con, you'll be selling stuff. You bring it home. Your family members, they benefit from those. They know you are a thief, but nobody's correcting you because everyone is benefiting from what? From the fact that you are a thief. A thief and a liar, they go hand in hand. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Matthew. Oh no, go back, go back to Romans. Something I want out of that. Romans chapter 13, verse 9, once again. You know what? Let's start at verse 8. I should have started at verse 8. Let me just correct my notes here. Read that. Romans 13, verse 8. Romans chapter 13, verse 8. Come on. Oh, no man anything mm -hmm. but to love one another. But to what? But to love one another. He says, oh, no man anything but to love one another. I'm going to deal with this later on. Go ahead. But to love one another. Mm -hmm. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. Hath fulfilled the royal law. Love your neighbor as yourself you do well. That's how you fulfill that royal law. You love your neighbor. 
You understand? Read on. Verse 9. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not kill. Read. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. Go ahead. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not bear, for, bear false witness. Unga kamimanga, ukambamanga, ubuamaka, ulishanu. That's what they say. Brother Bezilian, you can quote me on that, if that's correct. Read that again. Romans 13 verse 9. Brother Bezilian, is that correct? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Is he online? Nah, he's not online. Read that again, verse 9. Romans 13 verse 9. Go ahead. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery. No. Thou shalt not kill. Go thou ahead. shalt not steal. Read. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Okay. Thou shalt not bear false witness. This is a big thing in Israel. Something they call white lies and all of that. Listen. There's no such thing as a white lie in the Bible. Or is it acceptable to tell a quote-unquote white lie? Okay. Read that part again. Thou shalt not bear what? Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Watch this. Keep reading. Thou shalt not covet. Stop right there. Thou shalt not covet. One of the things that you need to understand is that because of covetousness, brothers and sisters will lie because they have what? They have the spirit of covetousness. So because you have a spirit of covetousness, you're going to tell a lie to get what you want. You see that thing? Because of what? Covetousness. It starts in the mind. The, 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 the law that says thou shalt not covet, it affects all the other laws. Once you covet, guess what? You're going you're gonna to do anything and everything unlawfully to get that thing that you want. Guess what you're going to do to get it? You're going to tell a lie. Just so you can get that thing. You see that thing? That's why it says thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not, what? Thou shalt not covet. That's a heavy thing right there because covetousness is it a what? It affects all these other ones. Read on. Thou shalt not covet. Mm -hmm. And if there be any other commandment, mm -hmm. it is briefly comprehended in this saying. So the Namely, Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul is gonna sum up what he just said because he could not list all the commandments here. It says it is briefly comprehended in this saying. Read. Namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You see that thing? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. He's summarizing it because all of these laws that we just read, they have to do with your neighbor. These are civil laws. How you deal with your neighbor. Briefly, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. You do well. Go ahead. Verse 10. Watch this. Love, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. You see that thing right there? Therefore, love. La hold on. Wait. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Because if, if, if you love your neighbor and you are applying the, uh, applying the royal law, you're not going to come up with some deceit to get what you want. You understand? You're not going to be deceitful just so you can get what you want. We've all been guilty of that thing. But it's time to repent now. Okay? It's time to repent. Read that part again, verse 10. Romans 13, verse 10. Mm -hmm. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. What is love? Keeping of God's commandments. Give me that in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3. Love is the fulfilling. No, no, give me 2 John verse 6. I think that's the one I want. That's the better one. 2 John verse 6. Mm-hmm. And this is love, mm -hmm. that we walk after his commandments. Come on. This is the commandment, that as ye have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. You see that thing? You should apply it. So love is when you what? When we apply the laws of God one to another. That's how you love your neighbor as yourself, that you don't suffer sin upon your neighbor. Leviticus 19, Leviticus chapter 19. Okay. Leviticus 19, verse 17. Read that. Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thy heart. 
heart. Come on. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and mm -hmm. not suffer sin upon him. You see that thing? And not suffer. There's, the word suffer means allow sin to come upon your neighbor and not allow sin upon your neighbor. You understand? So when you lie to your brother, you hate your brother. When you, hate, when, when you lie to your sister, you hate your sister. You, you understand? That's hatred in the sight of the Most High God. So what is hatred? First John 3. Watch this. Give me first John chapter 3, verse 15. First John chapter 3, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Is a what? Is a murderer. Is a murderer. So hatred is murder. So when you lie to your brother, you lie to your sister, you deal with your brother and or your sister deceitfully, that's murder in the sight of the Most High God. Read that again. First John chapter 3, verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. Mm -hmm. And he know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. Meaning what? You're not going to get the kingdom. Liars will not enter the kingdom. Why? Because that lying spirit, you're going to take it into the kingdom as well. He's going to cause you to do what? To break the law that says thou shalt not covet. To break the law that thou shalt not kill. So on and so forth. Because you have that lying spirit, you'll commit adultery because of what? That lying spirit is heavy on you. So the most High God is showing us that that lying spirit is a very heavy sin because it affects so many things in your life and to your brother, to your neighbor. Matthew 19 verse 16. Watch this. Matthew chapter 19 verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Read. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is mm -hmm. none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. So now Christ is teaching this young man the keys, giving this young man the keys to the kingdom. This is the key to the kingdom right here. You understand? Keeping the commandments. Read. He saith unto him, which Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Mm -hmm. Thou, thou shalt, shalt not, not commit adultery. Hold on. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not hate your neighbor. Because hatred is murder in the sight of God. So he's telling you, Thou shalt not what? Thou shalt not murder. Go ahead. Thou shalt do no murder. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not. The same thing that the Apostle Paul was going over. Is the same thing that Christ is telling this young man right here. Go ahead. Thou shalt not steal. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Stop lying. Why lie? I mean, eh? what is the benefit of lying? Death. That's the benefit. The benefit of lying is death. Watch this. Give me the book of 1 Timothy 1 verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 9. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Come on. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. So the laws of God the, is, hold on, the laws of God were not made for a righteous man. But he's going to tell you the laws of God are made for a list of people who's going to list here. You understand? Because in the Christian church, they say they don't keep the law because they use this scripture to say the law is not made for a righteous man. I'm righteous. Because they don't even know what that means to be righteous. Okay, read that again, verse 9. First Timothy, chapter 1, verse 9. Come on. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Come on. But for the lawless and disobedient. For the, for the lawless and disobedient. So the laws of God were made for the lawless and disobedient. Are we not lawless? Yes, we are. Are we disobedient? Yes, we are as a people. Go ahead. For the ungodly. And for the for ungodly. The Hold on. For the ungodly. As a people, yes, we are ungodly. We are ungodly people. The most High God gave us the commandments, but guess what? We reject those laws so we can do and fulfill the lust of the flesh. So that's the ungodly. Go ahead. For the ungodly and for sinners. You see that thing for the ungodly and for sinners. Do we sin? Yes. 
Give me that in First John 3 and 4. We break the commandments. That's why we ended up in the place that we're in now. In captivity at the bottom. Sharing 35% of South Africa's wealth. First John chapter 3 verse 4. Read what you got. First John chapter 3 verse 4. Mm -hmm. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Jump down to verse 8 now. Watch this. First John chapter 3 verse 8. Mm -hmm. He that committed sin is of the devil. Is of the what? Is of the devil. So if you break God's commandments, you are of the devil. Go ahead. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. Because the devil sinned this from the beginning. Hold on. The devil sinned from the beginning. And well, guess what? Let's talk about Cain. Because when Cain was asked, where's your brother? He said, am I my brother's keeper? Yes, you are your brother's keeper. But he, he listen, you see what he did? He, he had hatred. That hatred caused him to kill. And over and above, that, he lied about it. You see that thing? He lied about it. That's why the Cain, the spirit of Cain, is always used as an example because that's a very dangerous spirit. Okay, read that part again. First John chapter 3, verse 8. He that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. Read. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, mm -hmm. that he might destroy the works of the devil. One of those works of the devil is what? Lies, lies, telling lies. Watch this. Give me John 8, John chapter 8 and verse 44. John 8 verse 44. Watch this. John chapter 8 verse 44. Mm -hmm. Ye are of your father the devil. Ye are of your what? Ye are of your father the devil. Remember in 1 John 3 verse 8 it says, He that committed sin is of the devil. So he says, ye are of your father, the devil. He's going to tell you the sin that he's going to make reference to here. Go ahead. Ye are of, the, of your father, the devil. Mm -hmm. And the lust of your father you will do. He will tell you what the lust, of, the lust of the devil is. That those that don't want to hear the word of God will commit sins. Go ahead. He was a murderer from the beginning. Mm-hmm. And abode not in the truth. Because he lied. He because told a lie. Hold on. He told a lie. He says he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. What does the truth say? Thou shalt not murder. You understand? Thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not hate your brother in your heart. Okay? He broke all of those laws. Read. And abode not in the truth because there is no truth in when he speaketh a lie, he when he speaketh what? of his own. When he speaketh a lie. Mm -hmm. When he speaketh he a lie. Speaketh, when, when he tell lies, go ahead. He speaketh of his own. He speaketh of his own. What? The lies that he comes up with. Go ahead. For he is a liar. Mm -hmm. And the father of it. You see that thing? He is a liar and the father of it. Meaning what? He's accustomed to lie. He's, he's used to just lying. For every, it doesn't matter how small the thing is. He will lie to get it. He'll lie to get away or uh, to get out of uh, to get out of situations. He will lie about it. It don't matter. He will come up with a lie. He will put the lie out there. Just so he can get what he wants. Watch this. Give me, go back to First Timothy chapter 1, verse 9 again. First Timothy one verse nine. First Timothy chapter one verse nine. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, mm -hmm. but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners. Read. For unholy and profane. Mm -hmm. For unholy. For unholy and profane. We are unholy and we are profane. You understand? Read. For murderers and fathers. No. For murderers no. of fathers. Mm -hmm. For murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. 
for men slaves. You see that thing for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. Because today there's a lot of brothers in jail and a lot of sisters too in jail because what? They murdered their parents. You hear those horror stories all the time on the news. You understand? Teenagers killing their, killing their mothers and fathers for the insurance money. You hear stuff like that. Daily Sun gives you information about stuff like that. You understand? Come on. Verse 10. Verse 10. For whoremongers, mm. for them that defile themselves with mankind. That goes into the homosexual, uh, the homosexuality and all that stuff. Come on. For men stealers. For men stealers, meaning those that do what that for are lies. involved in. Hold on. Men stealers is what? Those that are involved in kidnapping. You understand? Human trafficking. Those are men stealers. Go ahead. First Timothy 1 verse 10. Read that again. First book of Timothy chapter 1 verse 10. For homongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind. Emma? For men stealers. For liars. For what? For, for liars. For liars. You understand? For liars. But come on, no. Brother I know you're online now. That's correct, right? Yes, sir. They say Lishanu. Do they not say that? Yes, sir. Oh, Lishanu. Ubuamaka. Okay. Read that again. For what? For liars. For liars. For liars. Go ahead. For perjured persons. For perjured permanent, they commit perjury. They go to court and they're supposed to uh, testify or speak the truth. They just lie. Go ahead. For perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. The sound doctrine is God's commandments. Read. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was mm -hmm. committed to the church. You see what he's saying? So the laws of God is according to the what? The glorious gospel of Jesus, the Christ. So the laws of God is according to the gospel. The laws of God is the gospel. That's the good news right there. Why is it good news? The good news is when you keep the commandments, you get the kingdom. That's the good news. That's why the law is the gospel. The laws of God, that's the good news. That you keep the laws, you get the kingdom, you rule forever and live forever. That was, those are good news right there. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 9. Colossians 3, verse 9. The book of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 9. Read. Lie not one to another. You see what the Bible is saying? Lie not one to another. Don't bear false witness against your brother, against your sister, against your neighbor. Apply the royal law one with another. Read that again. The book of Colossians of the 3 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Lie not one to another. Read. Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. You must put off the old man with his wicked deeds. One of those, one of those wicked deeds is what? Lying. Bearing false witness. You understand? Because that can get you killed. You understand? Lie, a lie will get you killed. So you have that spirit of lying. The, your, the spirit of lying and deceit, okay? Your job is to repent from that thing, okay? Read verse 9 one more again. The book of Colossians 3 verse 9. Lie not one to another. Mm -hmm. Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. Now watch this. Give me Sirach 7 verse 12. Ecclesiasticus chapter 7 and verse 12. Sirach chapter 7 and verse 12. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Devise not to lie against thy brother. You see that thing? To devise. Because to devise that means to sit down, you plan a lie. How am I going to deceive this brother? How am I going to deceive this sister? That's how you sit down, you plan it out. Okay, read that again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 12. Come on. Devise not to lie against thy brother. Mm hmm. Neither do the like to thy friend. He says, neither do the like to thy friend. Your friend is talking about what? A brother that you teach and the brother that you apply the commandments with. A sister that you apply the, commandment, the commandments with. 
That's why it says, prove a friend. How do you do that? You keep the commandments. So that's why I tell you, brothers, especially those of you brothers that are coming in because you knew each other in the world. One thing I'm noticing is that you don't correct one another when it comes to these laws. You understand? That friend ish got to go. Why? Because we need to get to the kingdom, brothers. So you cannot be among you. Here you are, you are among yourselves, but you're not applying the laws of God one to another. That means you hate one another. You don't love one. You don't love one another. You don't have the spirit of charity one with another. You see your brother going astray. You don't say nothing. You let him just go into that pit and he drags everybody else with him. You see that thing? Read that again. Verse 12. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 12. Divide mm-hmm. not to like with thy brother, neither do the like to thy friend. Because your friend in this truth is who is the one that does what? The one that keeps God's commandments. Give me the book of John, chapter 15, because Christ, he gave us an example of this thing. He spoke about that thing. What does friendship mean when it comes to this book? Okay, John chapter 15, start of verse 10. The book of John, chapter 15, verse 10. Read. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Ye shall what? Even ye shall abide in my love. You shall av- abide in the love of the Father. Okay? You, how do you abide in the love of the Father? You keep God's commandments. You apply the, ro- the royal law. One of the, we apply the laws of God. The one that we're going specifically about today is what? Thou shall not lie to your brother or your... Don't bear false witness against your neighbor. You understand? So read that part again, verse 10. The book of John chapter 15, verse 10. Read. If you keep my commandments, ye mm-hmm. shall abide in my love. Read. Even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. You see that thing? So Christ, for him to abide in the most high God's love is because he's keeping and applying God's commandments. So likewise, Christ is teaching us, yes, I keep the command. I keep my father's commandment. So likewise, you must keep your father's commandment. Why? Because when you do so, you're going to abide in his love, just like I abide in his love. Jump down to verse... 14 now. John 15 verse 14. Watch this. The book of John chapter 15 verse 14. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my friends. If ye do. Yeah, my what? Ye are my friends. Ye are my friends. So Christ is going to explain to you what friendship is. Read that part again. The book of John chapter 15 verse 14. Ye are my friends. Uh Uh-huh. If you do whatsoever I command you. If you do whatsoever I command you. What did Christ command us to do? Jump back up to verse 10. Read verse 10 again. The book of John chapter 15 verse 10. If you keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. You see that thing? That's what Christ commanded us. Keep the commandments. You understand? Keep the commandments. So when it says, ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you, what did Christ command us? To keep the commandments of the Most High God. Jump down to verse 17 now. Watch this. The book of John chapter 15 verse 17. Mm -hmm. I command you that ye love one another. Read it again. The book of John chapter 15 verse 17. These things I command you that ye love one another. You see that thing? That's what Christ commanded us. He commanded us to love one another. How do we do that? We keep the commandments of the Most High God so we can abide in the Father's love. The Most High God, he only loves us if we do what he says. When we don't do what he says, the Lord don't love us. It's that simple. Watch this. Give me, go back to Sirach 7 verse 12. Go back to Sirach 7 verse 12. So for for friendship, we must not have friend-ish. It must be a friendship because the true friendship is what we are reading here. True friendship is what's written in this Bible. Anything outside of that, that's not friendship. Watch this. Read that. Sirach 7 verse 12. The book of Ecclesiastes 7 verse 12. Come on. Device not a lie against thy brother. Mm -hmm. Neither do the like to thy friend. Neither do the like to thy friend. So that friend... Guess what? That friend is a friend because he does what? He keeps the commandments. We're not talking about acquaintances. 
We're talking about friendship. A friend. You understand? A friend. Watch this. And how are you going to know that he's a friend? He's a true friend? You're going to do what? Give me that in Sirach 6 verse 7. Watch this. Ecclesiasticus chapter 6 verse 7. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 6 verse 7. Mm -hmm. If thou gettest if thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be on his spirit. You see that part right there? If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. That's the key right there. You must prove that brother. You must prove that sister. Why? Because you need to see if they are about this Bible, if they are about what is written. If they are not about what is written, that's not a friend. That's an enemy. You understand? So, brothers, you know who you is. Make sure that the friendship is based off of what is written. Because how are you going to know if this brother is a true friend? You try the spirit by the spirit. If you, if you show them, bro, you're going off. This is not according to the scriptures. Are they going to take heed? Or they're going to develop the spirit of bitterness towards you? They're going to hold a grudge against you. That's not a friend. You understand? That's a demon right there. So your job is to make sure that that friendship must be based on what is written in this Bible. Okay? Because you can know somebody for years. The minute this Bible gets opened, then you start to see they are not really about this. You understand? Read it again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 7, chapter 6, verse 7. Mm -hmm. If thou wouldst get a friend, prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. You see that thing? And be not hasty to credit him. So what you need to understand is that that credit, you must only give that credit based on what? Based on the things that you have seen that this brother is doing. If they, are, if they line up with what is written. The, the things that the sister is doing, that they line up with what is written in this Bible. Not because of how you feel in your heart. No, according to what the most High God says. Go back to where he was at. Sirach 7 verse 12. Again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 12. Device not a lie against thy brother, neither do the like to thy friend. Come on. Use not to make any manner of lie. Mm -hmm. For the custom thereof is not good. For the custom thereof is not good. He says, don't come up with any, any way to make a lie. Use not, you, he says, use not to make any manner of lie. Whatever type of lie it is, whatever the justification is, the why you had to lie, then most of God don't want to hear that. You understand? It doesn't matter whether it's a small thing or no. In the sight of the most High God, it's a lie. The most I don't care whether they did what, they, what level of the degree of it. No, it's a lie. Plain and simple. Read that again. Come on. Verse 13. The book of Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 6, the book chapter of Ecclesiastes, seven, verse 13. Chapter 7, verse 13. Read. Use not to make any manner of lie. Mm -hmm. For the custom they offer is not good. So the custom of lying is not a good custom. It's not a, it's not a, it's a poor habit. It's a bad habit. Meaning you're accustomed to lie. You, a lot of the times you can't even tell the difference whether you are lying this time or you are telling the truth. Because now you can't tell the difference whether what you are saying is a lie or is the truth. Because you are accustomed to lying. You understand? Watch this. Read on. No, no, that's it. That's it on that. That's it on that thing. Give me Psalms chapter 4 verse 2. Psalms chapter 4 and verse 2. The book of Psalms chapter 4 verse 2. Read. Oh, ye sons of men. How long will you turn my glory into shame? Mm -hmm. How long will you love vanity, vanity and seek after listing Salah? You see, you see what he's saying? He says, how long will you love vanity and seek after leasing? So vanity is leasing, which is what lies. How long will you what? Will you love vanity and seek after what lies? Because if you are accustomed to lies... You're going to, you're going to, you are going to be attracted to those people that bear false witness. You are going to be attracted to those people that always come up with schemes and all manner of deceits to get what they want, to go outside of what is written in the Bible. 
You see what I'm saying? So our job is to examine ourselves, is to examine our ways, the way we think, especially when we feel or we think that we're in a corner. Because whenever you, when, whenever you are in a corner, that's when you see brothers, the type of decisions they make because they are now between a, a rock and a hard place. So in their minds, there's no way out. And that's where the lies come in. That's where the deceit, the flattery, just so you can get what you want. You understand? Read that part again. The book Come of on. Psalms, chapter 2. Oh, ye sons of men, how long will you turn my glory into shame? How long will you love vanity and seek after leasing the law? Watch this. Give me Psalms chapter 5 now, verse 6. Psalms chapter 5, verse 6. The book of Psalms chapter 5, verse 6. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. Mm -hmm. That speak lies. So King David is praying. He says, thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing, that speak lies. Go ahead. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. You see that thing? The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. Because the bloody man is a what? He's got a murderous spirit on him. He will lie to get somebody killed. You see that thing? So that's why he's saying, read that part again, verse 6. The book of Psalms. Chapter 5, verse 6. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. The Lord will abhor, meaning the Lord will hate the bloody and deceitful man. The most high God hates that thing. He hates a lying spirit. He hates a deceitful spirit, a, a corn artist. You understand? The Lord hates that thing. So our job is to examine, you understand, and see, you know what? I've been bearing false witness. I'll give an example. You see, brothers and sisters have councils and all that. Brothers will be saying, you know what? We identify a problem set in your spirit. This is what you need to do. You need to, we have identified X, Y, and Z. Okay. Then your job is to apply these things, is to apply these scriptures to get rid of this. Guess what? A situation will happen. The brother will do the same thing. So guess what? They are, they are liars. That's a liar right there. You see that thing? Because they are not, they, are, they said they're going to do, but they didn't do it. They don't even communicate. They, 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 that, they don't even communicate why it didn't go down. They don't communicate. You know, that's better. Communication is key. Communicate. Give me the heads up. I will not be able to do X, Y, and Z. That's okay. That's fine. We understand, but don't use that as a loophole. Okay? But my point is, in the councils, don't be agreeing to things. You see, because a lot of the times, brothers and sisters, they will say, you know what? Say, I understand. I see it. I see. I didn't look at it that way. You know, oh, praise to the most high God. This thing is bubbled to the surface. Yeah, because you are flattering with your tongue. You think you are telling me what you think I want to hear. I see through the BS. I just watch and learn. I said, hmm, okay. My point is, you're not deceiving me. You are deceiving yourself. Because guess what? Three months from now, or two months from now, or two weeks from now. Some people, is not even two, it's, it's a day. A day from now, guess what? They, will have, they would have done the complete opposite of what you, what you counsel them about. The complete opposite. So what is that? That's a liar right there. They will deceive you. They will agree. You understand? I'll give an example. Give me that in Ecclesiasticus. Hmm, watch this. Ecclesiasticus chapter... 20 let me see let me see mm. give me Sirach chapter 19 i'm sorry Sirach 19 verse 27 start of verse 26 the book of ecclesiastical chapter 19 verse 26 there is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly he does what that he hangeth down his head sadly you see, you see, you see the, you see the character of this, this brother or this sister right here. They hang their head sadly. He says there is a wicked man that hangeth down his head sadly. Meaning, what? When the correction is coming, the brother or the sister they'll be hanging their head down as if you know I'm really ashamed of what I've done. No, the 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 key word is is there is a wicked man or woman. Okay, read that part again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, verse 26. There really? is a wicked man that hangeth down his head, sadly. Mm -hmm. 
but inwardly he is full of deceit. You see that part right there? But inwardly he is full of deceit. Meaning what? The, the hanging of the head down, you know, in a sense, making it seem like they really, this thing, they've touched them, you know, I'm really sorry about, no, they are not sorry. No, no. It says, but inwardly they are full of deceit. The tears, and that's just a smoke screen. That's just to manipulate you. Okay? Because how do you know they're manipulating you? The thing just keep repeating itself. You see, ever seen that, uh, that bug that is always be rolling a, uh, 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 they roll a door, um, they, they take doo-doo, especially cow doo-doo. You see that, it's, it's like a black, it's a, it's a, it's a bug. I used to see it uh, in, the, in the gundus. It, it, moves in, it, it moves in reverse. It's always be pushing this uh, roll. It takes a cow doo-doo and it rolls it, it, it rolls it into a ball. And it just be moving. You see that thing? Uh -huh. So what you are seeing here says, inwardly he's full of deceit. You understand? They make it seem like everything is all good. But guess what? They are just deceiving you. The next day, they would have done the complete opposite. What is that called? A liar. Leshanu. Ubuamaka. Ulishanu. That's what they say, right, Brother Basilio? Yes, sir. Is, is that how they say Ulishanu? Mm -hmm. That's how they say it, right? Uh, you ever see that 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 show, Matatela? Matatela sees you. Mm -hmm. Some of you are young in here. You don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> Read that again, verse 26. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, verse 26. Really? There is a man that hangeth down his head sadly, mm -hmm. but inwardly he's full of deceit. But inwardly he's full of deceit. He's making it seem like he's sorry, but he's not. You understand that? Next verse. Watch this. Casting down his countenance. Doing what? Casting down his countenance. Casting down his countenance. You understand? They'll be speaking real soft. You understand? They'll be teary-eyed. They'll be crying. But inwardly, they are full of BS. That's the deceit right there. Go ahead. And making as if he heard not. You see that they make it seem like they didn't hear you properly. You understand? Go ahead. Where he's not known, mm -hmm. you will be a mischief before thou be away. You see that thing? It says, where he's not known, meaning what? He's gonna, you're gonna correct him about one thing or correct her about one thing. And then where he's not known, they'll continue the evil. You understand? It says, he will do thee a mischief before thou be away. Meaning, yes, they are coming to you about one thing, but really in their mind, they've already planned what they're gonna do already. They're coming to you just so they can say, no, but I did seek counsel. I spoke to Elder about one, two, three. You are doing that just so that you can say, no, I spoke to leadership. But really, you're going to go off and do your own thing. Whatever you have, you have concocted in your head, you, you, whatever you've devised, that's why it says devise not. Devise not a lie. You understand? In Sirach chapter 7. Don't devise a lie. So what we are reading here is when counsel is given out to you, and we have identified some, some, some things that you are struggling with. Your job is to really follow through on it. Here's another thing. I told brothers, put a timetable together. And sisters too. To this day, I have not seen a timetable that is complete, that is being operated upon. I'm yet to see it. But brothers sat down and wasted my time and theirs. You see that thing? What is that called? A liar. That's a liar right there. That's a liar right there. Okay? So now when we have councils, there's things I'm picking up. I'm picking up X, Y, and Z. He said, but this, this thing should have been fixed a long time ago. This thing should have been operated on or worked on. No, you didn't. You just did it on, you just spoke to me on the day, but going forward, no feedback, no communication. You don't say nothing. And then, I will have to force you to set up council. Why should I do that? Because a lot of you, when I don't ask you about it, you think I forgot. Yeah, that's what you think. There's, the fact that I don't ask you about doesn't mean I forgot. I want to see, are you a man of your word or a woman of your word? You understand? Because some, some brothers, 
they are trying. Some sisters are, but some of you, you don't give a damn, but you're not hating me. You understand? You just hating yourself. Because this thing is going this lie is going to keep building up. If we say we're going to do, let's do it. If you can't communicate it, I come unable because of X, Y, and Z. Then we give it to somebody else as an example. Or we come up with another way of how you can accomplish this thing. But a lot of you, you note your geniuses up in here. Okay? Read verse 27 again. I want this verse to marinate. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 19, verse 27. Casting mm -hmm. down his countenance and making as if you heard not. Where he is not known, he will do thee a mischief before thou be away. You see that thing? Where he is not known, he is going to do a mischief. He is going to lie before thou be away. But don't get it twisted. I can tell when you are telling a lie. A lot of times I won't say nothing. But in your mind, you, you just think, yeah, you know, this time I got away with it. He didn't pick it up that I was lying. No, we see it. I just keep quiet and say, okay. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because it's like, get it together, but you don't want to get it together. You, a lot of you, you like having counsel, but you don't apply the counsel. Going forward, from this day forth, if you come to me about, if you come to me, if you seek counsel, fine. You're going you're gonna to be counseled. You return again with the same thing. I'm going to ask you, did you apply the first counsel? If you did not, bye. I'm not going to hear you. That's the new rule now. Because I've been, I've, I've been looking at it and I'm starting to realize, you know, brothers, they love to seek counsel. Sisters too, counsel, but they don't apply the counsel. You understand? They don't apply the counsel. That's why now I'm going to set up two meetings. I'm going to set up two meetings, one for South African, South Africans, another for Israelites. I know Israelites, they will apply, they will get themselves together. South Africans will know that's that, that class right there, that meeting, that's for the South Africans who don't want to change. They want to remain South Africans. You see what I'm saying? Then when you come into that, that other meeting, we know, oh no, that's a South African problem right there. You see that thing? <laughs> Everyone will know that's a South African problem right there. The Lord is looking for Israelites who wants to change. Okay, brothers? So this thing of saying we have cancer, you would like to set up cancer, but you don't apply the cancer. Don't waste my time or the most high God's time, more important. Watch this. Give me the book of Psalms 40 verse 4. Okay? The book of Psalms chapter 40 and verse 4. Watch this. The book of Psalms chapter 40 verse 4. Read. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust mm -hmm. and respecteth not the proud. Read. Such as turn aside to lies. You see that part right there? It says, Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. Because if it, excuse me, if you trust the Most High God, when the counsel goes out, you will know. The, you, in your mind, you know. This is the counsel from the Lord. This is not the counsel from the elder. No. The Lord is the one that's giving the counsel. He's just being used as a vessel. It's that simple. But a lot of you, you think I'm the one that's giving. No, I'm not the one that's giving the counsel. That the Lord, the spirit of the Lord that's what's doing that. So it says, blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud. Hmm. Give me that in Sarah 10. Sarah 10 verse 12. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10, verse 12. The beginning of pride is when one departs from God. Mm -hmm. And his heart is turned away from his maker. You see that thing? The beginning of pride is when one departs from the Mosai and his heart, his mind is turned away from his maker. Meaning what? Now you are not under the Father's love, like it says in John 15, verse 10. You are not in the Father's love. You are in, you are in the realm of Satan now. Satan is your daddy. At that point. Watch this. Give me Proverbs 16 verse 18. Proverbs. Okay. Proverbs 16 verse 18. The book of Proverbs. Chapter 16. Verse 18. Read. Pride goeth before destruction. Mm. And an haughty spirit before a fall. You see that part right there? It says pride goeth before destruction. 
Meaning before you are destroyed, guess what's, what's the first thing that's going to come upon you? The spirit of pride. When you depart from the Most High. Because when you depart from the Most High, the Lord, you're no longer, the Lord is not your strength. You don't trust in the Lord no more. You trust in Satan. So pride goeth before destruction and an haughty spirit before a fall. You see that part right there? So guess what? Go back to Psalms 40 verse 4 again. The book of Psalms, chapter 40, verse 4. Read. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust mm -hmm. and respected not the proud. And does what? Respected, respecteth not the proud. And respecteth not the proud. So the brother that maketh the Lord his trust, the sister that makes the Lord his her trust, guess what? It says they will not respect the proud. The proud is those, the prideful is those that do what? That move away from God's commandments. That don't follow the counsel. They don't apply the counsel. That's the proud. You understand? They don't follow counsel. They just lie. They make empty promises. They don't deliver on none of them. They are, they are waiting for me to come back to you. You kidding? A lot of you, you bugged out your mind. Okay? It says, respect of not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Because the proud will turn to lies. The lies they will tell, you understand, to, to butter you with lies. And you think, listen, we used to be in, the, I used to be in the world. You understand? I know how that works. The hell is this? Watch this. Give me Psalms 101 verse 7. Psalms 101 verse 7. Watch this. The one, book thing of Psalms. Know, you, one thing that you need to understand is that me flattery, flattery don't do nothing. You don't do nothing for me. It's like water off a duck's back. Don't flatter me with nothing. Okay? The only thing that I care about is we say we're going to do, let's do it. You say you're going to put a timetable together and come back to me. Guess what? You better do it. I'm not going to follow you. I'm not going to ask you about it. You say, Elder, I'm going to come back to you with a timetable. I'm going to keep it simple and then I'm going to build up to it. I'll share the timetable with you so we can make sure that I'm not missing anything. All praises. Guess what? It's up to you to finish that thing. But none of you, you come back to me because you know why? You realize that this is actually work. I must apply myself to do this. That requires me to what? To have a notebook, to keep track of the things that I'm doing, to see where I'm at, to see how long this is going to take me to complete it. Is this realistic? Is this timetable in line? None of you doing that. Instead, you, you think about that, you realize that means I have to apply myself. So therefore, I'm not going to, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do that but I will fake the funds. The way I'm going to do it, I'm going to seek counsel, but I'm not going to apply the counsel. You see how that works? That's the mind of the Negro, always finding loopholes. Okay? Psalms 101 verse 7. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 101 verse 7. Mm -hmm. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. Read that again. Read that again. The book of Psalms, chapter 101 verse 7. He that worketh deceit Shall not dwell within my house. You see that part right there? He that worketh deceit, meaning they are accustomed to lying. You understand? It says, shall not dwell within my house. You will not be in the kingdom. If you work deceit, you're not going to be in the Mosai's vineyard. Okay? In the Mosai's kingdom. Read on. The book of Psalms, 101 verse 7. He that worketh mm -hmm. deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. You see that thing? He that telleth lies. He that telleth lies. Meaning what? You cannot help yourself. You just lie. Every chance you get, you just be telling a lie. You don't care what, what, the, what is the impact your lie is going to cause, what damage is going to... Mm -mm, you don't care. As long as you got away with it, quote on quote, as long as you told the lie because you feed on those lies, guess what? You don't care who it hurts. You don't care who it destroys. Mm -mm. As long as you are satisfied, guess what? To hell with everyone else. That's the mind of the liar. The mindset of a liar is what? That's a selfish mindset because they only think about themselves, what they want and what they must do to get it, to hell with everyone. Read again, verse 7. The book of Psalm, chapter 101, verse 7. Read. He that will shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. Shall not tarry in my sight. Watch this. Give me the book of Jeremiah chapter 9. 
Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 4. Watch this. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 4. Read. Take ye heed, everyone. Take ye heed, everyone, of his neighbor. And trust ye not in any brother. Mm. Every brother will utterly sub who utterly supplant, supplant. supplant. Mm -hmm. who utterly supplant and every neighbor will walk with slanders you see that thing right there it says take ye heed every one of his of his neighbor meaning what you must be mindful stay in the spirit you understand take ye heed every one of his neighbor and trust ye not in any brother meaning what what is the which type of brother is this the one that is working deceit the one that is sneaking around causing confusion among brothers that's the one that you must not want you must take heed of and everyone else by the way okay for every brother will utterly supplant you know what it means to supplant to overthrow moses had the same spirits in the wilderness christ had the same spirit when he walked the earth who was those people the scribes and pharisees judas was the weak link you see that thing? That's why it says, take ye heed. Okay, everyone is of his neighbor. And trust ye not in any brother, for every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders to cause confusion and what? And division among the brethren. That's why I tell you, brothers, you come together, it better be about the laws of God. You come together because of friend ish in the world, the most high God is not amongst y'all. Tell you straight. The Lord will not be among that thing because none of you have the sense to say, you know what, that's some, that's some evil right here. I'm going to distance myself from this thing right here. Repent, brother, but I'm going to distance myself from you. None of you want to do that because why? You are still moving with that spirit of, you know, we are in the world, we are friends. You understand? No, that's not friendship. That is not friendship. You have to have the mindset that I come with a brother in the truth because the reason why I'm honing on this is because I'm seeing that spirit up in here. And that's why I'm bringing it up because I want it to stop. Because if it doesn't stop, the most high when it brings judgment, don't be surprised. Okay? Don't be surprised by that. Because the reason why it's coming out now, the angels are being activated to do their thing. You understand? You need to take heed to this thing, brothers and sisters. You understand? The clicks, clicks don't work in the congregation. Don't have clicks. The only click you must have is the laws of God. That's the click. Is this friendship according to the, the scriptures? Yes, oh praise. If it's not, guess what? Separate yourself from it. Because it will destroy you if it's not corrected. Okay? Read on, verse 5. Watch this. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor. They will what? Deceive everyone his neighbor. They will deceive everyone his neighbor. That's what David said in Psalms 40 verse 4. You understand? You put your trust in the Lord. Don't what? Don't be. Let's read that actually. Let me not butcher it. Okay. Psalms. Go back to Psalms 40 verse 4 again. The book of Psalms chapter 40. Let me see. Let me see. I don't think it's Psalms. Psalms 40 as we read it. No, no. Psalms 5 verse 6. That's what I want. Psalms chapter 5 verse 6. The book of Psalms chapter 5 verse 6. Read. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. Mm -hmm. That speak lies. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. So that spirit of deceit, you understand? Go back to Jeremiah 5, Jeremiah 9, verse 5. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 5. And they will deceive everyone his neighbor. You see that part right there? They will deceive everyone his neighbor. Meaning they don't care about brotherly love. They don't care about the unity of brethren, the love of neighbors. They don't care about that. They don't care about the unity of the brethren, the brotherhood. They don't care about that. They don't care about that special oil that ran, that ran down Aaron's beard. They don't care about that thing. You see that thing? 
So that's why they will deceive everyone his neighbor. And what, one thing I've seen, you understand? One thing I've seen in the world and in the truth is this. Some brothers, they realize that they are not applying the laws of God to their own life. And they start to realize brothers around them, they are progressing. There's a bit of progress in their life in terms of what? We're not talking about money and no, 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 not that stuff. In terms of what? Them getting themselves together. You understand? They are no longer doing things that they used to do. They, they, they were struggling with the spirit like this. Guess what? They take you to the council. They apply. It. And when they stumble, they come back and say, I'm applying. I got to this, pro, to this point. When I get to this point right here, I'm struggling. What, is the, what, what must I do at this point? Okay, no, brother. Apply X, Y, and Z. As thus said the Lord. Now, what happens is some brothers, when they see other brothers progress, they start to develop the spirit of hatred. They start to develop the spirit of envy, anger. You see that thing? And guess what they will do? They will now start to do what? To cause divisions among the brethren. They will form cliques. They will create uh, some clans. You know, the, the thing that Korah did, Dathan and Abiram, Yes. Instead of going to the brother and asking the brother, bro, you know, I know you, you used to struggle with this thing. How did you overcome it? Can you like, uh, you, you see that the, instead of doing that, no, you're not going to do that. Instead, you'll hate a brother. You'll hate a sister. Instead of asking how they overcame. Because you don't want to apply the laws of God to your own life. Now everyone is, is, is graduating from primary. They are going to high school. You see, you feel like you are being left behind. Whose fault is that? That's your fault. That's on you. You understand? Read that again, verse 5. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 5. Read. And they will deceive everyone, his neighbor. Mm -hmm. They will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and they weary what? themselves. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, you must, don't, don't be pausing, but don't be reading like you are running somewhere. Read that, read that part again. They have what? They have taught their tongues to speak lies. You see that thing? They have taught. Meaning what? This is, a, this, is, this is a common thing. It's a habit. They have taught their tongue to speak lies. Because how do you, t you teach by doing? You teach, your, you have taught yourself to speak lies. Meaning, no longer do you check yourself when you lie. You, you, you No longer do you feel guilty when you lie. Because now, you are accustomed to lying now. Now it's becoming natural to you. You have taught yourself. Now, it doesn't matter what situation it is. You just have to lie. You see that thing? That's some evil stuff right there. Some brothers have that demon. But they don't seek counsel about it. But they think they can hide that demon. No, you can't hide the demon. You will not hide that demon. It will come out. Okay? Read on. And weary themselves to commit iniquity. They weary themselves to commit iniquity. Meaning what? You, you, you work tireless, tirelessly to run, to, 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 to teach and allow your mouth to run mischief. You understand? The, the tongue is loose. You can't control it. Okay? You just have to say stuff. You understand? Lies. So what we're reading here is, it says, and weary themselves to commit iniquity. You meaning what? You exhaust yourself with that lying tongue. And guess what? Not only do you, because you don't care if you exhaust yourself. Guess what? You start to exhaust other members in the congregation. That's when it starts to become a problem. Even more. Not that it's not a problem. Now it's the cancer is spreading. Guess who's spreading it? You. You're not applying the royal law. Okay? Watch this. Give me... You know what? Read verse 6. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 9, verse 6. And habitation is in the midst of deceit. Mm -hmm. Through deceit, they refuse to know me, said the Lord. You see that thing? It's a through deceit. They refuse to know the Lord. Because you are deceitful. You, you deceive yourself, you deceive others, and you also think you can deceive the majesty on high. You see how, you see how deep the rabbit, the, 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 the rabbit hole goes? 
it goes that deep because first you will deceive yourself. And then when you see you get away with deceiving yourself, then you start to deceive others. Okay. Now, when you start to deceive others in your mind, you think, don't nobody see me. I'm that ostrich. My head is in the sand, but my bum is out there. Everybody can see. You see that thing? Now you deceive the most side because that's what you think you can, you are capable of doing. You see, there's levels. You understand? There's the depths of Satan. There's levels to this thing. So don't just think, no, it's a, it's, it's, no, it's a white lie. Mm -mm, it's a lie, period. Okay? Let's not if, but, or maybe about it. It's a lie. That's it. Repent. Get yourself together. Watch this. You see that part? It says, through, it says, uh, through deceit, they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Watch this. Give me First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2, and let's start at verse. We're gonna start at verse 2. You know what? Let's get to let's get to the point. Read verse 3. First John 2, verse 3. First book of John 2, verse 3. And hereby we do know that we know him mm -hmm. if we keep his commandments. So if you know the most high God, you are, it means you are doing what? How do you know the Lord? The only way you can know the most high God, you must apply what is written. You, what do you, what, what, because what is it that you're going to know? You're going to know what the will of the Father is. You're going to know the most high God's will. You're going to know what pleases him. You're going to know what angers him. You're going to know what is an abomination in the sight of the most high God. You're going to know all those things. You're going to know what you must do to please the Lord even more. That's how you know him. The only way you can do that, you must be applying, you must know the do's and don'ts of what he wants and what he does not want. That's how it's like you, 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 you know, brothers and sisters in the world, I, I like to get to know the sister. I like to get to know the brother. Guess what? In the truth, it, 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 in the truth, there is, there is something like that in the truth as well. When you are proving, when you are proving a brother, when you're proving a sister, yes, you want to get to know them. You want to know what spirit you are dealing with. And the only way to know what spirit you are dealing with, the laws of God is what's going to teach you how to identify the type of spirit you are dealing with. You understand? And the type of spirit you are when you are around them. That's another thing right there. Watch this. Read on. Verse 4. Come on. He that says, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar. And the truth is not in him. You see that thing? Yeah, so if you say you know him, but you're not keeping the commandment, because how else would you know the Lord if you're not keeping his laws? Because his laws will tell you what to do and what not to do. That's why he's saying, he that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandment, is a liar. The only way you can know the do's and don'ts of the Bible, what the Lord wants, what pleases him, you must be doing what he wrote. You must read, you must apply. Then you're going to know, okay, this is how I know the Father now, by doing his will and doing that which is pleasing in his sight. Read that again, verse 4. 1 John 2, verse 4. Come on. First book of John, chapter 2, verse 4. Read. He that says, I know him and keep it not his commandments. He's a liar and the truth is not in him. Is a liar, a liar. Is a liar and the truth is not in him or her. Because what is the truth? The laws of God. Because if the truth is in you, you're going you're gonna to know right from wrong. If the laws of God is in you, you are keeping them, you are applying them, you study, you meditate, you're going to know right from wrong. But when you don't study to and apply and apply the counsel, guess what? You're not going to know right from wrong. But you know what you're going to do? You're going to wing it though. You're going to make up things. You're going to make it seem like you're applying the counsel, but you're not. But you're gonna you're gonna paint a very nice picture. You wanna you wanna fake the funk very well though. But we can see it. That's why it's called a funk. Funk. A funk is a smell. We're gonna smell it, although you are hiding it, because that's what you think you are doing. Watch this. Give me uh, Jeremiah five verse one and two. Jeremiah chapter five verse one. The book of Jeremiah, chapter five, verse one. Mm -hmm. Run ye to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem, and see now, 
and know and seek in the broad places thereof. If ye can find a man, if there be if there be any that if there be any that executes a judgment that seeketh uh -huh. the truth and now pardon it. You see what the Lord is telling Jeremiah? He says, run through, run to and fro through the streets of Jerusalem. We are Jerusalem. And see now and know and seek in the broad places thereof, in the Cassis and all of that, in the suburbs, wherever we are scattered. If he can find a man, if there be any that executed judgment, meaning according to the law, they keep the commandments, that seeketh the truth, meaning the laws of God, and I will pardon it. He says, then I will forgive it. Watch this. Go ahead. Verse 2. And though they say, the Lord liveth, surely they you swear falsely. They, surely they, they swear falsely. They swear, but they swear falsely. They are bearing false witness. They say, but they do not. What is that called? Hypocrisy. They say, but they do not. You see that part? You see, you see that thing right there? So that is what Christ was dealing with the Pharisees about. There were a bunch of hypocrites. They were saying, no, I'm going to apply. I'm going to do such and such, but they don't do it. Okay? So that's what the Lord is actually saying to us. He's saying, we, we, we say, what do they say? We swear. We swear falsely. That's bearing false witness. The Lord liveth. I swear. God is my witness. That's what the black man and black woman like to say. I swear God is my witness. He says, but surely you swear falsely. Surely you come among. It's that simple. You understand? And some brothers and sisters, you know what they say? They lie when they get caught in the lie. Guess what they say? No, you know, I omitted it. They won't own up to it. No, you know, I gave you half truths. So what is that called? The truth is the truth, period. A lie is a lie. That's it. Okay? But you're going to say, no, I didn't dis just that. I did not disclose the whole thing. Or you're just making excuses for your lie. No, you are a liar. Repent. You see that thing? Watch this. Give me Sirach 20 verse 24. Ecclesiasticus chapter 20 verse 24. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus of the 20 verse 24. Mm -hmm. A lie is a foul blot in a man. Mm -hmm. Yet it is continually in the mouth of the un in the mouth of the untaught. Because those that are taught, those that are learned, those that have the spirit of wisdom on them, guess what? They're gonna understand that a lie, this is what it will do to you. It's a foul blot in a man. Meaning what? You they will all no matter what they do, they will always make sure that they give, they tell you a lie. Because they are not satisfied if their lie doesn't come out of their mouth. You understand? So it's a foul blot. It's an error in the mouth of the untaught. You understand? But he does not have the shame. Because it's a, something that he's accustomed to doing. So he does not have shame whatsoever. And when they are confronted with it, they will not own up to it. If they own up to it, they're going to be what? They're going to they're gonna sugarcoat it. They're going to pat themselves on the back because they don't really want to admit the fact that they are a liar. Just admit, repent. Let's move on. Next verse. Watch this. Verse 25. A thief is better than a man that is accustomed to lie. That is what? Accustomed to lie. Meaning what? It's a custom. It's customary. A man that is accustomed to, to lie. It's a habit. They have a habit of lying. It doesn't matter what the situation is. They will just lie. Because that's what they feed on. You understand? Read. But they both shall have destruction to heritage. They're not going to get the kingdom. But they both shall have destruction to heritage. They will not get the kingdom. Go ahead. The disposition of the liar is dishonorable. Read. And his shame is ever with him. You see that part right there? Is that the disposition of a liar. The word disposition means your character. You understand? Your character, your, your mannerism, your character. says the character of a liar is dishonorable. Meaning your character, the way you act, the things you say, the type of decisions you make, that's your character. 
You understand? You have the spirit of deceit. There's flattery. Because deceit and flattery, they go hand in hand. Your brother just be like you to flatter and all with the words. You just sit there and say, hmm, I wonder what lie is hiding behind this flattery right here. Sisters like to do that too. You understand? Sister like, sisters, they love to do that thing. Effeminate brothers, they love to do that as well. Flattery of the tongue. But when you are a spiritual man, you're going to look through beyond the flattery and say, I want to know because I'm now, really, we're in the realm of manipulation. So you pay more, even more attention. You understand? But in their mind, because they have no shame, in their mind, they think nobody can pick up that they are liars. You see that? Read verse 26 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, 20 verse 26. Read. This position of the liar is honorable. Huh? The book of Ecclesiastes, 20 verse 26. The disposition of a liar is dishonorable, and his shame is ever with him. And his shame is ever with him. He has no shame. He's shameless. You understand? He has no shame. Because if, 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 you, he had, he, if he had that spirit of shame, guess what? He's going to consider his ways and repent so the Lord can give him wisdom. Watch this. Give me Sirach 23 verse 15 now. The book of Ecclesiastes 3 verse 15. In the day of thine affliction, it no, shall no, be remembered. No. Sirach 23 verse 15. Come on, pay attention. The book of Ecclesiastes of 23 verse 15. The man that is accustomed to opprobrious words. Opprobrious words, go ahead. The book of Ecclesiastes of 23 verse 15. The man that is accustomed to opprobrious words shall never be reformed all the days of his life. Now that's a heavy thing right there. He says shall never, shall never, never, ever, ever, never. Okay, it says the man that is accustomed to opprobrious words will never be reformed all the days of his life. You know what that means? That goes into, you know, when you are very critical of yourself, you meaning what? You are too hard on yourself. You know, the reason why brothers and sisters are too hard on themselves is because they don't apply what they study. They don't apply the counsel. You are too hard this because you don't apply. And when now it's time for you to get it together, you have to work extra hard. You end up what? You end up making mistakes because now you have to work extra hard instead of doing day by day. Because if you do on a daily basis, when you make a mistake, you understand? When you make a mistake or you sin through ignorance and all of that, it's easy to recover because you are accustomed to applying the laws of God to your life. You have, you, you have disciplined yourself daily. You have a routine that you follow that routine on a daily basis. So when things go wrong, it's going to be easy for you to recover from it. But if you pile up the, 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 the things that you know you must repent from, one of being being what? Deceit, lying. Guess what? Then the day when the lie is going to blow up, it's, it's going to feel like he, you're going to feel, you're going to wish you, the earth could just open you, it just swallow you up so you don't have to deal with it. But guess what? It's very important for you to daily you apply this stuff. If you have that lying spirit, guess what? You every day you must what? You must practice. Practice telling the truth. Because you are accustomed to lying. Now you must reverse that whole thing. Consider your ways and be wise. Keep the commandments. Remember, thou shalt not bear false witness. Thou shalt not make any manner of lie. So your job is to examine yourself. Any situation whatsoever it is, make sure that you, you consider the things that you say, you filter your words with the laws of God and tell the truth at all times. Guess what? And the more you do it, you, your spirit is going to start to get rid of that evil demonic spirit called the spirit of lying and deceit. Okay? Watch this. Give me Revelation 22 verse 14. The book of Revelation 22, verse 14. Come on. The book of Revelation chapter 22, verses 14. 
Rain. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Okay, read the verse. Come on, the call, the, call the chapter and verse. All right. The book of Revelation, chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gate into the city. So now those that keep the commandments is those that will enter, they will make it into the kingdom. Watch this. Now the next verse is those that will not apply. Those that were, those that are accustomed to lie, accustomed to deceit, they have no shame whatsoever in their mouth. Read. For without our dogs, Without our what? Dogs. Without our dogs, meaning those that will not enter into the kingdom, those that, those that will not make it. This we're, we're still we're dealing with Israel here. It's twofold, but right at this point, we're dealing with the 12 tribes of Israel. Because the subject matter is, it says, and may enter in through the gates into the city. So this is talking about the 12 tribes. Go ahead. For without our dogs and sorcerers, Sorcerers, meaning those that what that are that are into witchcraft. One of that what, what, one of the example is what stubbornness. Sorcerers. Stubbornness is the sin of witchcraft. If you read Samuel 15, first Samuel chapter 15, verse 23 down. For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. So what you are reading here is sorcerers, those that are stubborn, they fall into this category right here. Because you you say you're gonna apply, you're gonna. A lot of you are talking to you about what? Put a, have a meal plan. Set up, a, put a meal plan together. What you're going to eat on a day to day. None of you have done it. You understand? Have a meal plan. You're going to have a meal plan so you don't have to what? You don't have to be, um, um, some of you said you don't have time. You, you cooking is taking too much. Plan your meals. Okay, plan your meals. Plan your meals so that you know you just take a scrap dinner many videos on YouTube. But you don't want to do that. You understand? You don't want to do that. Timetable, don't nobody has it. Or those that have it, they don't follow it. That's the point. Sorcerers, stubbornness. Stubbornness, it goes hand in hand with lying. Because if you are stubborn, you make it seem like you hang your head when correction comes, but when you when when you are no longer with the person that's counseling you, guess what? You still you still continue to do the evil. That's a lie right there. Okay, come on. Sorcerers and whoremongers. And whoremongers, liars, read. And murderers. Murderers, liars, read. And idolaters. Idolaters, because they say they love God, but they're bowing down to Buddha. They bound down to white Jesus. Lie. Read. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. That's a heavy thing right there. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Meaning they love to come up with lies. They feed on that stuff. They tell you a lie in their minds. Guess what? When they tell, they, they, they get off on telling a lie. They get off on that. Some people get off on telling lies. Some people, they get off in what? In deceiving others. They get off on it. They feed on it on a daily. If it doesn't happen, listen, something must, something must be wrong. You see, the same way black people are addicted to drama. Yes, lying is one of them also. You just Google the word liar on Google and click on images. The Negro is the first one that pops up. You can't make this stuff up. Read again. Come on, verse 15. Stay with me. The book of Revelation 22, verse 15. Come on. Without a dog and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Revelation 21, verse 8. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable mm -hmm. and murderers, murderers and homeless, liars and sorcerers 
Sosa. You see that? He's repeating the same thing that we just read. Go ahead. And idolaters. And idolaters. Go ahead. And all liars. And all what? And all liars. And all liars. Those that loveth and maketh a lie. And all liars. What is their fate? Read. Shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. Mm. Which is the second death. Yeah, that's some heavy stuff right there. It says shall have their part. They shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That's some heavy stuff right there. That's some heavy stuff right there. So when you lie, you're not going to get the kingdom. Because not only you're not going to get the kingdom, but the real reason why you lie is because who are you lying? Who are you lying against? You're lying against your brother. You're lying against your neighbor, your sister. So you see, the biggest, the, the biggest crime is that you hate your brother in your heart. That's the biggest crime. That's why you, you, are, you are not worthy to enter into the kingdom. Because you don't, you, don't, you, you don't feel anything when you lie. You're not realizing that that's hatred, that's deceit, that's murder. So that type of spirit, why, would, why should you enter into the kingdom? Because you're going to do the same thing in the kingdom. So you can't be allowed. So right now, the Most High God has given us a chance to get it together, to fix our mental hangups. Okay? Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 120, verse 2. Psalms 120, verse 2. Watch this. The book of Psalms, chapter 120, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips mm -hmm. and from a deceitful tongue. So that is what you must pray to the Lord about. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips. Who's lying lips? Your lying lips. You understand? And from a deceitful tongue. Whose deceitful tongue? Your deceitful tongue. You must depart from that thing. Pray to the Lord that he, he, what? he takes away that spirit from you. Read it again. The book of Psalms, chapter 120, verse 2. Deliver mm -hmm. my soul, O Lord, from lying lips. And from a deceitful tongue. Next verse. What shall be given unto thee? Or what shall be done unto thee? Thou false tongue. You see that thing? What shall be given unto thee? What shall be done unto thee? Thou false tongue. What must be the judgment that must be brought upon you? Because of your lying tongue. Read. Sharp arrows of mighty. Mm. Sharp arrows of the mighty. With coals of juniper. That's what must be brought upon that lying tongue. That false tongue. Sharp arrows of the mighty. With coals of juniper. You see that thing? Juniper roots. That goes into those trees that when you bend them. The, 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 um, they are coals. They last long. You understand? So those of you that grew up in the bundus. You should know these type of, those type of trees. Okay? It says, what shall be given unto thee? Or what shall be done unto thee, thou false tongue? This is the judgment. Sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. Meaning what? Destruction. Death and destruction. The Lord will bend coals of fire upon your head. Watch this. Give me the book of 2nd Esdras. Okay. 2nd Esdras chapter 15. I believe it's verse 53 or something. Let me see. Let me see. Uh -huh. 2nd Esdras chapter 15. No, 16 verse 53. Read that. Second book of Ezra, chapter 15, verse 16. 63. 16, verse 53. 16, 1, 6. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 53. Did not the sinner say that he had not sinned? Mm -hmm. For God shall bring coals of fire upon his head. You see that thing? Don't, the, the sinner must not say, I have not sinned. You are a liar. Don't say, no, but the reason why I did it was because he, no. Mm -mm. If you keep doing that, the Lord will burn coals of fire upon your head. Okay, read that part again. Did not the sinner say that he had not sinned? For God shall burn coals of fire upon his head. Read. 
which saith before the Lord God and his glory, I have not sinned. Because guess what? Give me that in First John 1 and 8. Because we read this some time ago. First John chapter 1, verse 8. First book of John, chapter 1, verse 8. Read. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. Mm -hmm. And the truth is not in us. You see that thing? If you say you have no sin, you deceive yourself. What does it mean to deceive? To lie. You lie to yourself because you are accustomed to lying. So you keep lying to yourself because you're telling yourself that, no, it's not that bad. No, but it's, no, it's a small thing. No, but I didn't think it would cause so much damage. Mm -hmm. You see that thing? I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Why? Because you deceive yourself. You bugged out. You don't see right from wrong. You are, what do they call um, a reprobate? Your mind is seared with a hot iron. You don't see that this thing is, this is a wrong thing to do. You understand? You don't see anything wrong with it. That's why a lot of you brothers are asking you, do you see anything wrong with this? You be saying, mm, uh, that means you don't see anything wrong with it. You understand? But I just sit there and just listen. Brother be saying stuff, I just say, hmm. Somehow, you don't take this truth seriously. You think this is a game. You think you can come up here and lie to the leadership. Sisters too, you think you can just fake the funk. We can see you. But you are deceiving your own self. You understand? You are deceiving your own self. Because a lot of the times I'm seeing also, brothers be studying, the type of questions that I'm, I'm, I'm getting is like you just doing it because you just want to make it seem like you are studying. And I may, I'm mentioning this the second time now. Okay, I'm mentioning this thing the second time. Somehow, one year out the other. You understand? I told you, the prayer is we praying for labor. That's what I'm praying for, laborers. Brothers and sisters that are going to support this truth, brothers and sisters that are going to study they're going to be serious about the most High God's business. We see some of you, you don't, you, you're, not, you, you're not serious about the situation. You don't take it serious. You understand? You're, you're not taking it serious. It's like you are just passing by. That's okay too. Okay. Uh, go back to 2nd Ezra chapter 16 verse 54. Watch this. 2nd Ezra chapter 16 verse 54. Second book of Ezra, chapter 16, verse 54. Behold, the Lord knoweth all the works of men, their mm -hmm. imaginations. They are what? Their, food, their imaginations. The Lord knows our wicked imaginations because we deceive ourselves. We think we can hide the thing, the evils that we have in our minds from the most high. Go ahead. Their thoughts. They are what? Their thoughts. Their thoughts, your thought process, the way you think, what you think in your mind. Read. And their hearts. And their hearts, your intent, your intentions of the, the way you do things. What is the intention behind this? Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs 12, verse 22. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. The book of Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord. Mm -hmm. But they that deal truly are his delight. You see that thing? Those that if you deal truly, the most high God will be will delight in you. Don't nobody want that? You don't want the Lord to delight in you? A lot of you, it's like you just want to continue to be that stinking saver before the most high God. I mean, really, let's grow up already. The hell is this? Grow the hell up. Okay, read that again, verse 22. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14, verse 22. Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 22. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord. Uh -huh, they are what? They are abomination to the Lord. They are disgusting in the sight of the Most High God. Come on. But they that deal truly are his delight. If you deal truly, you are the Lord's delight. Jump up to verse 20. Watch this. 
the book of Proverbs to tell us when deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. Mm-hmm. But the counselors of peace. You see is that joy. thing? Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. Because in order for the de- deceit to come out of your mouth, is because these are the things that you, your mind is feeding on. You are what you eat. You feed on evil, you're going to spew evil. You cannot feed on evil and speak truth. It's impossible. You understand? I remember this one day, many, many years ago, I was in, I was in the East Rand, right? Um, and then this guy, he walks in into the taxi. We're in the taxi. There was a sister. Um, we're at the back seat. So the sister is sitting at the back seat. Okay. And then the brother walks in. He sits down. So the brother is a heavy smoker. So now he's smelling like ash. Okay. He walks in, he sits down. Then the sister is like, hi, yo. You know what the brother said? The brother said, Oi, you in can't win. We come out in Aji Panana and Nugi Orange. I thought that was a funny thing. So, but the brother was correct. You understand? The brother was right. You can't eat banana and you smell like orange. That's not gonna happen. You understand? You eat banana, you will smell like banana. Will smell the savor of banana on you. Okay? You feed on you, you feed on lies. Guess what's gonna come out of your mouth? Lies, deceit, guile, bitterness, envy, anger, less, no joy. No spirit of jo- joy. You see, joy, that's a beautiful thing right there. No joy. Always bitter, always looking like you are smelling something. Why? Because these are things you feed on. Okay? Verse 20, again. Come on. That's my parents, sir. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 20. Read what you got. Chapter 12, verse 20. Race. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil. But to the counselors of peace is joy. The counselors of peace is joy. Next verse. Watch this. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. You see that the wicked is filled with mischief. Filled, meaning they are full of mischief. Everything they think upon is mischief. How to deceive, how to, how to go around, how to find a loophole to get what you want. You see that? That's, that's the dangerous spirit right there. Because that spirit is what? Is their mind is, is designed to just destroy. They don't want to build nothing. They just want to destroy. That's how, that's how they, that's, that's, that, they call it in, in, in software engineering, they call it bad code. Bad code. You understand? A code that is badly designed was not, was not written properly. There was no, there's no design pattern to it. You understand? It was just thrown in there. Because that's what the mind is feeding on. Just mischief and evil. Okay? Read that, read that, read that verse again. Verse 21. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 21. Come on. No evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. But the wicked shall be filled with mischief. The wicked is always filled with mischief because that's what they feed on. They run on that thing. When, when they are offline, when somebody speaks the truth, they go offline. When somebody is speaking lies, the signal starts to what? The, the signal starts to catch together strength. Okay? That's the mindset of the liar. That's the mind, the mind of a liar. That's how they think. Somebody coming with the truth, they think, no, he thinks he knows. He thinks he knows. He, he thinks he knows all that. Yeah, he's about this Bible and all of that. By the way, those are the mindset of the people in the truth. Get out the outside. But guess what? There's the same people. There are people in the truth with the same mindset. He's always talking about the laws, the laws, the commandments. I'm not talking about them. The Lord is talking about the laws. But the mind of the Negro, they are not going to look at it that way. No, because they have to absorb themselves from the situation. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 18. Proverbs 10, verse 18. 
Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse 18. Mm -hmm. He that hideth, he that hideth hatred with lying lips. He that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. You see that thing? That's a fool right there. He says they hide hatred with lying lips. So they will flatter you, but inwardly they are full of deceit. So they hide the hatred, the envy, the deceit through deceit. What is the deceit? Flattery. They will flatter you, but inwardly they are full of deceit. They want to destroy you. They are seeking, how am I going to destroy this brother? How can I destroy this sister? You see that thing? That's, that's what they are thinking about 24 hours a day. You understand? Correction comes out. The brother is holding gr a grudge. You understand? The brother is holding a grudge. Correction comes out. The sister is holding a grudge. I hate that Negro right there. He's always uh, doing, saying X, Y, and Z. No, the Lord is saying X, Y, and Z. Keep the commandments. Stop sinning. You understand? Pray that the Most High God be a truthful spirit in your mouth. That's the prayer you must make before his face. Father, please be a righteous spirit in my mouth. Be a truthful spirit in my mouth. Let not my tongue utter error and deceit. That's the prayer you must make before the Lord. The Lord will take that spirit from you. The Lord will have mercy on you. But a lot of you, you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. Guess what? That spirit is not going to leave you. Okay? Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 16 now. Verse 28. Proverbs 16 verse 28. The book of Proverbs 15 verse 28. A forward man soweth strife, and a whisperer separ and a whisperer separated chief friends. Now here, this is a heavy verse, right? It says, A forward man will sow strife. What is the strife? You're gonna call you you're gonna sow confusion between brethren. A forward man soweth strife, and a whisperer separated the separated chief friends so we went over friendship so is this the friendship that is this the friendship of the world no this is the friendship based on what is written in the bible because the worldly friendship is not the same that is not the same friendship that god describes god defines a friendship that is based on his commandments if that friendship must be bound by God's laws, the laws of God is what must be running the show to bring you, the two of you, or the, whatever, together. But if that friendship is not based on the commandments of the Most High God, guess what? When you see brothers come together in agreement, one spirit, one mind, according to the scriptures, a whisperer, a forward man, there is going to sow strife between them. They're going to cause division among them. So here we are, we are in the truth. You understand? Brothers and sisters come into the truth. You find already there's a machine working. There's a machine that's operating already. When you come in, because you have that deceitful spirit, now you want to cause division among the brethren that you found in the truth because of your lies and your deceit. That's what the Lord is saying right here. The friendship is talking about, talking about the friendship According to what John 15 verse 10 says. Watch this. Give me Proverbs chapter 14 verse 5. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 14 verse 5. Read. A faithful witness will not lie. But a false Come witness on. will utter lies. A faithful witness will not lie. They are not going to lie when I tell the truth. You understand? That's a faithful witness right there. They are moving in the spirit of what? The spirit of Christ. But a false witness will utter lies. Because they don't care about the repercussion of their lies. They don't care about the consequences. They will speak the lie anyway. Because they are accustomed to it. It's something that they, they are used to. That's how they live on a day to day. It's a habit. You understand? Watch this. Meaning it's a custom to them. It has become a ritual. Lying has become a tradition and a ritual unto them. If they don't do it, they don't feel comfortable. Okay, give me Proverbs 30 verse 8. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 8. Watch this. 
Proverbs chapter 30, verse 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Do what? Remove far from me vanity and lies. It says, remove far from me vanity and lies. That's the same thing that David said in Psalms chapter 4. Okay, come on. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Mm -hmm. Give me neither poverty nor riches. So now, come on. Yeah, yeah, read on. Feed me with food convenient for me. Meaning, give us this day our daily bread. That's what he's saying. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. But feed me, feed me with food convenient for me. Give me the things that I need. Only give me what I need. Not what I want, what I need. Don't give me too much. Don't give me too little. You understand? So, but you see that part when it says, neither give me, neither, uh, give me neither poverty nor riches. Because guess what? The poverty, that, the, the poverty, another thing, mm, I don't know if I should go into this right now. I'm not going to go into it. So simple. Remove far from me vanity and lies. That's the prayer you must make before the most High God. Like we read in Psalms 120, verse 2 to 4, you must make such prayers to the Lord so that the Lord be a righteous spirit in your mouth, not a lying spirit in your mouth. You understand? A faithful spirit. A faithful spirit, a truthful spirit. You understand? A sincere spirit. That's what you must pray for. Okay? Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Proverbs chapter 4 now. Proverbs 4. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 24. Proverbs 4, 24. Read that. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 24. Put away from thee a forward mouth. Uh -huh. and perverse lips put far from thee he says put far he says put away from thee a forward mouth to chacharach you see that thing that chacharach spirit very very dangerous spirit no breaks yeah very chacharach the, 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 the every decision they make is not calculated is not filtered with the laws of God there's no wisdom there's no sense they just go headlong when things go wrong, don't nobody can pull you out. Nobody can pull you out of that lie. You understand? Read that again, verse 24. Proverbs 4, verse 24. Read. Put away from thee a forward mouth, uh -huh. and perverse lips put far from thee. And perverse lips put far from thee. Because what? They are perverted with what? With evil. Because your mind is corrupted. As long as your mind is corrupt, is filled with evil, is filled with mischief, whatever comes out is not going to be anything that is contrary to what you, you what what your brain feeds on, what your spirit feeds on. It's not going to be anything different. You understand? Watch this, because this goes into that uh, scripture, that class we went over. That you are what you eat. Okay, Proverbs ten, Proverbs ten, verse thirty-two. Proverbs chapter ten, verse thirty-two. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 32. Mm -hmm. Lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. The, the mouth of the wicked speaketh lies. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable. How are you going to know what's acceptable? You keep the laws. You know the do's and don'ts of the law. So that's why it says the lips of the righteous know what is acceptable. How do you know? How does the lips, how does the righteous know what is acceptable? Because they apply. You're going to know what is acceptable in the sight of the Most High. You will know that. You are going to know because you apply. Your spirit is what? Your spirit is one with what is written. Your spirit is one with the spirit of Christ. Or you are waking to what's that goal. For that your spirit be in line with the spirit of Christ. You are waking your way up to that level of perfection. So that you can what you can receive the kingdom when the Lord returns. That's the mindset. That's the that that is the reason why we are all doing this. So that we can walk after the footsteps of our forefathers. We can walk after the footsteps of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because He did leave us an example. He left us an example. Watch this. Give me that in First Peter two. First Peter chapter two verse twenty one. First Peter chapter two verse twenty one. Come on. Even here unto we called, 
because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. So Christ left us an example. He left us a righteous example that we should follow after his righteous footsteps. Go ahead. Who did no sin? Who did no sin? Come on. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Neither what was bitterness found in his mouth. He did not hide hatred with flattery. He did not hide envy with lying lips. He didn't do that. Read again verse 22. First Peter chapter 2 verse 22. Mm -hmm. Who did no sin? Neither was guile found in his, in his mouth. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Watch this. Go back. Go back to Proverbs now. There's something I want out of there. Proverbs. We read it earlier. Proverbs chapter. Let me see. Let me see. Proverbs chapter. Proverbs 10. Yes. Proverbs 10 verse 18. Read that. Proverbs chapter 10 verse 18. He that hideth hate, he that hideth hatred with lying lips, and he that uttereth the slander is a fool. You see that he that hideth hatred with lying lips. So you have deep hatred, but you you disguise it very well with your flat eye, with lying lips. You understand? Watch this. Read that part. Read where we was at before. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 32. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. Read that again. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 32. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, mm -hmm. but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. So it says, the lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. You understand? They know what is acceptable. They know exactly what to say because they understand. They study. They have understanding. They have the spirit of wisdom on them. So they know when to speak, when to be quiet, when to ask questions. You understand that? They, they have timing. It says, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. They just speak evil. They speak lies. They have no filter. They don't mind their tongue. You understand? So that's why I tell you brothers and sisters too. Okay. Do not come to me with a counsel that we've gone over before and you have not applied it. The only reason why you will be coming back is because you've been applying and you got stuck or you are confused about, about something that you encountered while you are applying. But it must not be I'm seeking counsel but I'm not applying nothing. Why would you do that? That means this Bible, you're not here for this Bible then. That, but this Bible will not be a benefit, will, will not benefit you. Because you see cancer, but you don't apply. So what is that called? You are a liar. That's being a liar. So many cancers that have been given out, so many classes that go out, yet brothers are still making the same decisions that they made before they had the classes and before they had the council. And after they had the council, they are not making anything, they are not making different decisions to show that, you know what, I've learned from these foolish mistakes. Now I'm moving to the next level. It's just, it's like every single time when, when it's time for council, it's like a recycled demon. It just keeps popping up. It can't help itself. A recycled demon. And I'll see it. I said, this demon has been here before. Not necessarily talk about you, but you've got that demon on you. It keeps coming back because you don't deal with it. It manifests itself in multiple places, but you still don't pick up. By the way, the reason why this thing is coming back is because you don't apply. And when it comes back, it comes back with seven times more power. So guess what? Eventually, that thing will take you out the truth. Because you don't want to apply. You're playing games. We are at war. This is not a game. And I keep saying it, we are at war. But some brothers, one ear at the other. You don't consider. You don't consider your ways. 
like it says in the book of Haggai. Okay, watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 15, I believe. Proverbs chapter 15 and verse, verse 4. Proverbs 15 verse 4. Read that. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 4. Come on. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. Mm. But perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. Meaning what? It, 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 it will cause a dent in your spirit. It will vex your spirit. Okay, but perverseness therein is a breach in the spirit. It's a breach. It will vex your spirit. A liar will vex your spirit because they don't even see what they're doing is wrong and they will make excuses when they are checked. So that thing, the Lord is telling you, says, that thing will vex your spirit. You'll be mad as hell. He said, what the hell is this sister thinking? What is wrong with the brother? Why? Because what we are reading here is that they don't see that what they are doing is it, it vexes one spirit. You show them scripture, precept upon precept, one ear of the other. But they agree. You know what? Another thing that really, that really gets to me is that brothers and sisters, they will agree. Yes, this is true. This is true. And all of that. They can identify, but they just stuck there. We went over a class about this. You must identify, then you must acknowledge, then you repent, you work on it. Some brothers are still stuck. They have identified it, but they don't want to acknowledge so they can and work on it. They are stuck, they are stuck on step two. Even unto this day, today, they are still stuck there. They are still stuck on step two. So brothers and sisters, we need to consider our ways. Give me that in Haggai, chapter one, verse five. Haggai 1, verse 5. Haggai chapter 1, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Con do what? Consider your ways. Consider your ways. Con meaning examine your ways. Examine your ways. Give me that in Psalms 119. Psalms 119, verse 59. Watch this. He says, consider your ways. This is a solution right here. Consider your ways. Watch this. Psalms 119 verse 59. Psalms chapter 119 verse 59. Mm -hmm. I thought on my ways. I did what? I thought on my ways. I thought on my ways. Because now, guess what? You see, before, David is saying, before, he, was, he didn't think upon his ways because the Lord didn't bring it to his attention. You understand? So now the Lord correctly checked David because remember David, uh, he had a man killed for his wife. He sent Uriah into war and got Uriah, Uriah killed so he can sleep with his wife. So now the Lord brought it to his attention when the Lord brought for judgment on David. You understand? Absalom raped his, 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 his wives. You understand? His son died. That was the judgment. You understand? So now the Lord brought that to his attention through judgment. Now David is saying, read that again, verse 59. Psalms chapter 119, verse 59. Read. I thought on my ways. I thought on my ways. Because what did the Lord say? Go back to Haggai 1 and 5 again. Haggai chapter 1, verse 5. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Consider your ways. Examine. Self-examine yourself. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Go back to Psalms 119 verse 59. Psalms 119 verse 59. I thought on my ways. Uh -huh. I turn my feet unto thy testimonies. So now that's what David is saying. He's saying, listen, I, the most I brought something to my attention that I was not aware of it. You understand? And the way he brought it to my attention... He brought to my attention through judgment. Now, I thought on my ways, the evil ways that I was doing. And what did I do? And turned my feet unto thy testimonies. He returned back to the Father so he can be right with the Lord. So likewise, what we are bringing out, you have to do what? You must take heed. You must think upon your ways. You must consider your ways. You have a lying spirit. You have a deceitful tongue. Your job is to consider 
You must think upon your evil, deceitful spirit, that lying spirit, that lying nature, that dishonorable character, which is or what, which is causing you to lie, that disposition you've got. Your job is to think about that. Your job is to examine that and turn your feet unto the testimony or, or testimonies of the Most High. Next verse. Go ahead. Verse 60. I made haste. Uh -huh. I made haste and delayed not to keep the commandments. He says he made haste. He didn't waste time on this because the Lord brought it to his attention. He said, you know what? I need to fix this. I need to repent. Okay. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Okay. Watch this. Give me that in Sirach 5. Sirach 5 verse 7. Ecclesiasticus chapter 5 verse 7. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 7. Mm -hmm. Make no tearing to turn to the Lord. That's the same thing that David said. Make no tearing to turn to the Lord. Meaning what? Make haste. The same way David says, I made haste. I and delayed not. You understand? To keep thy what? To keep thy commandments. That's the same thing that Sirach is saying. Come on. Make no tearing to turn to the Lord. And mm -hmm. put not off from day to day. Don't say, no, I'll do it tomorrow. You know, I'll do it tomorrow. I know we had cancer. I know I promised I was going to do this. No, I'll do it tomorrow. It's always tomorrow because you think you have tomorrow. Tomorrow is not promised to you. Watch this. Hold this. Give me the book of Proverbs. Okay. Give me Proverbs. I believe what I'm looking for is in Proverbs. Hold on a second. Bear with me, brothers and sisters. It's been a while since I looked at this thing. I do know it's in Proverbs. Let me look. Yes, Proverbs 27 verse 1. Proverbs chapter 27 and verse 1. Proverbs chapter 27 verse 1. Mm -hmm. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. Come on. For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. You see that thing? It says, don't boast yourself of tomorrow. Only the Lord knows. You understand? For thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. So don't boast yourself of tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. So don't keep putting off from day to day. Go back to Sarah 5 verse 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 7. Make no theory to turn to the Lord. Uh -huh. And put not off from day to day. You see that thing? Put not off from day to day because tomorrow is not promised to you. Read. For suddenly, for what shall the wrath? For suddenly, for suddenly, out of nowhere, when you least expect it, go ahead. For suddenly, shall the wrath of the Lord come forth? Shall the wrath of the Lord, meaning the anger of the Lord, come upon you? Go ahead. And in thy security, when you are still comfortable, when in thy security, when you are comfortable, you understand, with no care in the world, because you are not mindful of the what of the thief that will come to your house. Let's talk about the second coming of the Lord now. Read. And in thy security thou shalt be destroyed. You see what the Lord will do? The Lord will destroy you. Why? Because the Lord has given you a chance over and over to fix it. You just keep putting it off. No, tomorrow. Tomorrow. You know, I'll do it tomorrow. Go ahead. And perish in the day of vengeance. And perish in the day of vengeance. The day of vengeance is the second coming of Christ. That's the day of vengeance. The great day of the Lord is coming. Give me that in Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 14. Zephaniah 2, verse 14. Okay. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 14. And flocks shall lie down in the midst of it. No, no. No, no, Zephaniah 1. I'm sorry. Zephaniah, Zephaniah 1, verse 14. Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 14. Come on. The great day of the Lord is near. Mm -hmm. It is near. And hasteth greatly. And hasteth greatly. Meaning what? It, we, we, the time is short. That's what Zephaniah is saying. The time is short. And hasteth greatly. Meaning the time is short. The great day, that's the day of vengeance that we read about in Sirach 5 verse 7. Go ahead. 
and hasteth greatly. Mm-hmm. Even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man shall cry, shall cry there bitterly. The mighty man shall cry there bitterly. Like what? Like children. Because the Lord will be bringing forth vengeance on earth upon men. Read. Verse 15. That day is a day of wrath. Is the day of the day of wrath, great anger. Go ahead. A day of trouble and distress. Mm. A day of wasteness and desolation. Wasteness and desolation, because the Lord will waste the whole land. Let's talk about Babylon the Great. Go ahead. A day of darkness and gloominess. Mm. A day of clouds and thick darkness. A day of clouds, the chariots, and thick darkness because of the smoke of the nuclear missiles that will hit this earth. Read. A day of the trumpets and alarm against the fenced cities Mm. and against the high towers. Against the high towers. So when the trumpet and the uh, the alarm is talking about the emergency, um, this institution, the emergencies, uh, the emergency institutions on that day, 911 will not be available. 10 triple one will not be available on that day. Read. And I will bring distress upon men. Mm. That they shall walk like blind men. Come on. Because they because they have sinned against the Lord. And their blood shall be poured out as dust. Mm. And their flesh as the dung. So what kind of day is this? Look at the stuff that's going to happen on that day. Because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood shall be poured out as dust. Meaning what? Like nothing. Meaning there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of dead bodies on this day. Okay? And their flesh as the dung. The Lord is going to do a lot of killing on this earth. Because so much evil has been happening since the beginning of time. The only way to purge the evils and the sin upon this earth Blood must be shed. That's the only way the earth is going to be cleansed from the evil. It's going to be cleansed with blood. Blood shed. That's why it says, in order for the righteous to be delivered, the wicked must be destroyed. That destruction, that's the, that's the purging of the sins on earth. So the earth may be cleansed from all wickedness. That's what's coming. That's, that's why you read the book of Amos. Amos said, listen, don't be looking forward to that day. You understand? We teach about it to what? To paint a picture, the little that the Lord can expose in our minds really was coming. But we don't really can begin it to imagine even how it's going to look like. You know, we can imagine it by reading it because we're seeing the stuff that the nations are building, the nuclear warheads and weaponry that they are building. But on that day, even the weapons that the nations have not shared on YouTube and all that, they are going to come out on that day to fight against the Lord. Okay? So, I'm going to end the class right here. Let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who died for us and gave us life that you also may have life this day. For I received the, of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Mosai hand for that thing. All praises to the Mosai. All praises.